All right, so this is going to be one of the only times that I probably will forget to, well, not just of how busy tonight's been, today's been, um, I probably will forget to upload it, but this is one of those videos that, <laughs> first video that I'm actually uploading on time, and, like, right when I record it. And by on time, I mean, like, what I was doing before was I would upload it, like, and then a week later, I publish a video, just because I wanted to have a video per week. So I keep doing videos like weeks in advance because I want at least one video per week and the only way to guarantee that with a new job and everything was to do that. Uh, but for right now, we're all caught up. But anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. First up, we have a Symbiote Spider-Man. It's comic reviews, by the way. Uh, Symbiote Spider-Man, quick two. Just a few of them. Um, I've been trying some of these, so I wanted to review them. So we got Spider-Man, volume, uh, volume 1. This one I had read be reread because I wanted to uh, continue on with the series, and I knew there was going to be things I would forget, so I had to refresh the memory, even though it hasn't been that long. Like, the, to put it into reference, it was just like two months ago. Maybe three. It was in like July. It was not that long ago. Like, if you go on my Instagram, it's you do not have to scroll down that far to find the review, the initial review for this, and I think it's still the same. In fact, I think I like this comic even more the second time around. This is insanely good. This is my favorite era of Spider-Man, so it's already gonna have a lot of bias. But even again, going against bias, it's just a good story. It doesn't retread the familiar ground. It's kind of like a an untold tale of Spider-Man. Basically, it's in between issues two fifty-two to two fifty-eight. I think it's actually, I, I might even be those official issues, maybe even more, and then of course, spe Spectacular, Spectacular Spider-Man too, but it's like all those, you know, it's basically, this has come out recently, the, this is the perfect companion to the Alien Costume Saga Omnibus that recently released. This is modern day Spider-Man, told it back in the 80s, flashback, but the Alien Costume Saga is those original tales. So, perfect companion piece. And I would go so far as to say the entire series of Symbiote Spider-Man is a good companion piece to that um, omnibus. Next up, we have Venom Dark Origin. This one, I've, it's been so long since I've reread this that I, don't even, I can't officially say how I felt about this book. Going off of like how I think I felt about it, I remember being kind of disappointed by this one. And rereading it, this is the reason why I reread books. Because I'll hate a book the first time I read it. Great example is Preacher. I did not like Preacher that much as the first issue. The first time I read it, reread it, loved it, and since become my favorite comic of all time. I shit you not. My favorite comic of all time. Those who have been around long enough or follow me on Instagram know this already. But I'm just reiterating to you. Because everyone in one's first video is their first video. So, you never know. But, uh, but this one massively improved if you go by my disappointment because I would, I would like this one it's a page turner really nice like an awesome uh, awesome honestly I, I, I keep saying a good companion piece that's to be able to spare me a book so it's kind of funny I was reading them around, around the same time sometimes back to back Brayer now we're into the disappointments and this one was just really lackluster um did not like this one at all I just I wouldn't say at all. I would say I was extremely disappointed by this one. Because I like fantasy, and I do like Christopher Cantwell's writing. I don't consider him to be, like, an A-plus writer. But because of his Doom series I've read, I'm pointing back here, that's why I keep the ploppies. I guess I'm all back there. Um, because of his Doom series I've read, I really like that one. That was really good. I've, it's just, I think it's, a, I think it's a phenomenal book. I think it's supremely underrated, too. And because of that one book, whenever I see Christopher Cantwell on, on a book, I'm like, unless it's Iron Man, I go, hey, why not check this out? And a long time ago, I almost bought the individual issues of Rare. Never got around to it, completely forgot about it, found out they had it in my library, got super stoked, got super excited, and maybe it was, like, just being overexcited and having too high expectations. But this one, I felt like he wrote this in his sleep. Especially compared to his Doom series. The fast-paced writing is just not existent for me, for me at least. I was bored. Not a great book. Um, but however, this might just be a book I reread and have a completely different opinion about and like it a lot more. Second time around. So I do still recommend it. It's four issues. It is pretty quick. But it's, it's, it's not like longer per issue, I don't think, at least. It's, it's at least your average uh, size comic. Like, 
for per issue page number page count. That's, that's the word I was looking for. Uh, but rare, still okay. Oh, and uh, um, I don't know if I'll do this. There's so few comics. I don't know if I'll do a out of ten review. You know, maybe if I remember, I'll go around them. I would do. I'll go. I'll go back around them. And say Venom, blank out of ten. Simeon Spider-Man, blank out of ten. Uh, but regarding this, I don't know. Uh, I might. Uh, regarding the, regarding the, matter of Oswald's body. Almost said murder. This one was all always their Christopher Cantwell book, and this one was all over the place. Um, in a good way, because I do want to reread this already. It's pretty engaging. I did like it. I like me some, uh, like, I do like um, certain flashback comics. I think the 60s, it's, it's an interesting time. And JFK's assassination has always been a supreme interest of mine since seventh grade but not enough to like doing like research on it but just kind of like if there's a comic or a movie i do want to check out a jfk movie um uh, but it's always been an interest of mine i, I wouldn't say supreme i didn't get, didn't get oversold it when i said supreme but it's always been an interest of mine in the back of my head so this one it did hit all those boxes however it is all over the place because so much happens in just five issues and even the back matter even though i skipped it i think even if i read the back matter i'd still be confused and not a whole lot of back matter. I, I didn't skip all the back matter. It's the first issue. It was a lot. I'm like, I'm not reading all that. But pretty good. I, I, I do I do still re recommend it. Just, you get, really got to pay attention to this book. Like, even more so than other comics. Giant Days Volume 6. I have loved this series. And Volume 6 is, like, the best volume of this series. Every last thing I love about this book is present here. It is funny. I am a very hard person to make laugh. And this comic had me, like, um, audibly laugh. And not just that. No, more than that. Like, I actually laughed, laughed at this comic. Which is, very, again, very hard thing for me to do because my humor is already broken enough. And, like, my humor basically, uh, if you, I hope you guys know who this guy, who these guys are, if you don't look up to them, look, look up to them, look into them, uh, only plays Ding Dong and Julian era specifically, that's my sense of humor. So, anything that's not like that, some of y'all find funny, but most of them, like, yeah, that's, that's a joke, it's a good joke, but I'm a hard ass for, for jokes. Uh, but this one, again, audibly laughed, and this isn't the same humor as what I just mentioned. So, that's saying a lot. Then you have some su surprisingly emotional moments, too. Like, there's something that happens at the end. I'm like, two things, actually. I'm like, damn. That actually got me. Like, I actually care about this character now. Uh, thirdly, there's a certain character. Something ha I don't want to give anything away. There's something that happens to a character earlier in the series that I was like, okay, we need a follow-up on that. You don't have a revelation like that and not follow up on it. And they kind of did here and there, but here we get a super huge follow-up to it. I'm like, finally! So, crowd-pleasing moments here and there, emotionally res resonant, super emotional moments, funny moments. This is my favorite volume of Giant Days thus far. Cannot recommend, cannot recommend that series enough. It is so damn good. Uh, but who would I recommend it to? Someone wanted the palate cleanser. It's uh, it's basically Archie for an older audience. I would say kind of the Mark Wade run of Archie kind of have that had that kind of humor. Like I I don't think Archie in general has ever made sex jokes. They're very infrequent, but they are in here, and it is they don't they don't just say like oh uh, like they don't make it. They don't exactly make it subtle to the sex jokes they're making. You know what it's making. Uh, there's the scene in here that is, it's implied sex. So there isn't, like, heavily implied. So there definitely is that in it. But it's, like, a TV-14 at most. Like, tv PG, Like, Simpsons has probably done worse than they, what they've done here. But it's just kind of like that. It's not for kids. But it's not, like, anything, like, a 12-year-old wouldn't um, know about already. Eat the Rich. This has been a reread. I reread every six months. I love this series, and it's not changed. This is just so damn good. So damn engaging. Can we get a volume two? I know it doesn't make sense, but can we get a volume two? I am going to keep Sarah Gailey in the back of my mind, because I keep forgetting the author's names. Um, not I keep forgetting the author's names, just because of how much is going on, I'll, I'll forget. I'll forget. I'll be like, oh, Sarah Gailey, let's see what she has written, and then I'll forget. But definitely we'll keep her in mind 
because of this how so damn good this series is and how the third time is still as good as the first time. And finally, Miss Truesdale and I can just go look at it. Uh, Miss Truesdale in the Fall of Hyperborea. This I thought was a sequel to, and it kind of is a sequel to the Sword of Hyperborea. It's another Mike Mignola Hellboy universe book, um, but that was writ co-written by Rob Williams. This is all done by Mike Mignola, and I think that. I liked the first one because it was Rob Williams, and Rob Williams had more to do with the story than Mike Mignola did, because this does take a bit of a step down from Hyperborea, the first one, but only because of how good the first one is. This is a worthy enough follow-up. It is engaging, it's everything I like about Mike Mignola's work, but yeah, I think at this point he needs a co-author. It's a little spotty here and there, some pacing issues here and there, um, it has that, but it still has that Mignola feel. If you are missing a Mike Mignola and you want a refresher and you find this at your local comic shop for 10 bucks, buy it. Or full price even. But that, as they say, is that. 11 minute video and not bad. I, I get back to my reading because again, I had a long day and uh, only had work. I call it school because it's a, I work at a school. Um, but and I had to do shit when I got, I got home. But anyways, that is that. I'm going to be behind on my video, that's my point.